Rafida Bana. Thank you, Professor Rosenthal. Um, let me also thank uh, UNESCO and Lithuania for inviting me to highlight the unthinkable, unthinkably horrific stories of impunity in Bangladesh. And this is all happening in front of our eyes right now in the broad daylight in these modern days of 21st century. Two days ago, this weekend on Saturday, it was a bloody day in Dhaka, the capital city of Bangladesh, again. This is the sixth incident since February this year. But you know, why stopping at the writers only when these machiri wielding assailants know the Bangladeshi government will stay silent no matter what they do? So now, this time, their targets were the two publishers who dared to publish the books of these writers on free thoughts, secularism, and freedom of speech. The situation is dire. These bloody days are becoming a norm. Hacking the people with a voice is becoming a monthly chore. This weekend, they managed to kill publisher Faisal Arafin Dipon, owner of Jagriti Publishers. His fault? He published two of Avijit Roy's book. The other publisher, Ahmed Rushutu, owner of Shuddashar, got lucky and survived multiple machete stabs inside his office. Writer and blogger, Rano Dipon Bushu and poet Tariq Rahim were with Tutu in his office at that time. Both of them were injured. Tariq Rahim's situation is still critical. He's still fighting for his life in the hospital with multiple stabs and a bullet stuck in his abdomen area. You'll make a mistake if you think we are facing attacks only from these religious fundamentalist killers. To make it even better, our own government has implemented and amended the so-called Information and Communication Technology Act. This ICT Act outlaws any publications or broadcasts or websites that are fake and obscene and communications that cause that causes to hurt or may hurt religious belief. You can tell these are all very vague terms. They're very hard to be defined. The new amended ICT Act has made the criticism of religion on internet punishable with up to 14 years of imprisonment. And yes, the Bangladeshi government has arrested quite a few, few people based on this act. You would think they must have arrested the killers of those bloggers, right? No, they instead arrested some of the bloggers under this act for hurting religious feeling in their writings. One of the journalists was arrested and harassed a few weeks ago for so-called embarrassment to one of the ministers of the current government. Bangladeshi government stayed completely quiet after the first three murders this year. And then when they were forced to say something after the fourth murder, they in instead told us to be careful about what we write. They have openly said that they were walking a fine line because of the electoral, electoral politics. They cannot risk their alliance with the religious groups by supporting the secular writers of the country. None of these real killers have been captured or tried yet by the government or the, by the government or the judiciary system. A few have been captured, but we haven't seen them tried yet. Some of them even got out on bail. When some of these bloggers went to the police to notify about their threats from these terrorists, they decided to remain silent and inactive. Some of them even were advised to leave the country. They're not ashamed or hesitated to provide indirect support to the killers this way. We are living in a country right now where the bloggers, writers, journalists do not feel safe to express their views anymore. I'm pleading to the international community to pay attention before it gets completely out of control like some of the other countries we just heard about. These brave journalists, writers, bloggers, publishers in Bangladesh love their country 
and want to make a difference in their own, own homeland. They are out along the, cities, along the streets in Dhaka and in many other places in Bangladesh today as we are speaking to protest these murders and the impunity and the inaction of the Bangladeshi government. We have been continuing our work knowing the threats. We are asking the international community to come forward to help us save our free voice, freedom of expression, and a healthy secular society. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Afda Bonam Ahmed. <laughs>